Hi there, I'm Sally Marchant and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to desensitise your dog to things that they don't like. Now little Skylar here quite enjoys her walks, she runs around and never seems to be phased by too much, but for some reason she doesn't like having her harness put on. You get the harness out and the ears go back and she walks off and when the harness is on she just stands stock still. She obviously doesn't like something about this. Now if it was a problem with her being outside and her being scared of things outside, then we'd look into desensitising her to the things that were outside. But once she gets outside she seems to really enjoy herself. So there's something that she doesn't like about having a harness on. So we're going to look into that. Now she's a small dog, it would be quite easy to uh, simply pick her up and put the harness on and say, get over it, we're going for a walk. But that's going to lead to her increasing um, worry or anxiety about having this item put on. So she may end up um, running away from us rather than walking away from us or hiding behind the sofa or possibly even having, trying having a little growl or a little snap because that's her way of saying, I'm not happy with this being put on, I don't want this on me. We don't want that to happen, so we want to change the emotion behind the harness. So we start off with Skylar, with the harness just on the floor. Got a pot of her dinner here, this is her breakfast. I'm just going to keep that out of the way. I'm just going to pick up the harness and give her a treat. Good girl. Sky, come here. This way. Good girl. Pick up the harness and give her a treat. So she's starting to get the association that picking up the harness gets a treat. This might take a few sessions over a day or two, but we did a little bit of this earlier, so pick up the harness and give her a treat, and then put the harness down again. So this is the way she can get her breakfast for the next few days. And it's starting to change the underlying emotion. This harness is starting to mean a good thing rather than, oh dear, it's going to be put on me and I don't like that for whatever reason. You don't want to push them into being frightened of the object because then no training is going to occur at all. Bring the harness out to a point where they're a little bit wary and then you reward them. And you change that emotion from that harness being around from a little bit wary to quite happy that that harness is around. Once you can see that emotional change, that's the stage where you're ready to move on. If you try to progress too quickly and the dog shows that they're unhappy with the situation, then just take the training back a little bit and train around an area where they are comfortable. Move it around so it makes a noise in case it's the noise she doesn't like. Good girl. And instead of Bond doing off at the moment, she's staying with me, so she's obviously quite keen to keep going with this training. Good girl. She's not on lead or anything, so she doesn't have to stay here. She could wander off if she needs and have a, have a break. Good girl. Good girl. So she seems to be happy with that at this stage. So I'm going to try just opening it a little bit. Just wait until she, good girl, has a bit of a sniff of it. Yes, good girl. So yes is my clicker word that I can use to mark the behaviour. Yes, good, nicely girl. Is this here? Is this? Yes. And she's done a lot of clicker training, so she's picking up this up very quickly. That is something, yes, something to do with the harness that I want. Yeah. Yes. Good girl. This can be done with dog who, dogs who aren't used to clicker training. It'll just take a little longer, maybe two or three sessions. Yes. And every time they look at that item or go towards it, yes, good girl. You mark and give a treat. Yes. So I'm going to up the criteria again a little bit. Good girl. I'm just going to position it where her nose is likely to go through the hole. And you see she's, good girl. She has a tendency, this way, to put her nose either side of it. Yes, good girl. That was nice. As I say, we have already done one session of this before, so this is progressing quite quickly. Yes. Very nice. And stay in there. Nicely done. Good girl. Now, she's got her head nearly all, all the way in, and I could just put the lead over, but I don't want to scare her, so I'm going to take it off again. And then she can have the, the practice of going back towards it. Good girl. So you see, I started off with her just sniffing at the harness. But now I'm rewarding and encouraging her to put her nose actually into the gap. Good girl. Yes. Very good girl. 
this. Yeah. Good girl. So now she doesn't get a reward for sniffing it, she only gets a reward for putting her nose into the gap. Good girl. That's good. And head out again. Nicely done. Yes. I could even add a command in here if I like if it seems suitable. So I could say harness, good girl. Harness, good girl. Harness. Good girl. Yes. If you're going to do this over a few days, it might be worth using a different way of walking your dog or simply playing activity games in the garden instead of walking them for just a few days while you're doing this training. Because if you then have to wrestle with your dog to get the harness on to go for a walk, you're going to undo a few sessions worth of training. Harness. Good girl. Go on. Go on. Yes, clever girl. So again, she pushed her head into that harness. Take it off gently. I'm not forcing her to do anything. Good girl. And she gets a treat for having it off as well because that's, I'm again coming over her head and that might be the thing that she's not, not keen on. Harness. Harness. Good girl, go on. Go on then. <laughs> Come here. She's only a puppy still, so she's very playful. Come here. Good girl. Harness. Good girl. That's very good. And when she does something particularly good, she gets a jackpot, which is one biscuit, two biscuits, three biscuits. If you give them all three in one go, then to them it's a little bit like one slightly bigger biscuit. But if it's one, then two, then three, that becomes a much bigger prize. Good girl. Harness. Good girl. Yes, nicely done. Good girl. I can try leaving it on. You happy with that? Good girl. Very good girl. I'll take it off again. Go on then, you do it. Yes, clever girl. That's nice. Come on down here. Yeah, clever girl. Harness. Go on then. Good girl, come on. Harness. And sometimes it might seem that they take a little step back. This guy, this way, ah, ah, come here. Good girl. And they look a little worried. Good girl, but persevere. Just keep going. Have another go. Good girl. And you see, she was quite happy to that time. But don't worry if you do feel, if it seem like you take a few steps back. You can take it off. Off. Yes, yeah. clever girl. Because they will soon, soon pick it up again if you keep consistent and make sure that you keep the training nice. Yeah, harness, good girl. She seems happy with it going to that level, so I'm just going to very gently, good girl. Drop one side, yes, clever girl. And then take it off again. And take it off, yes, clever girl. And again, harness. Yes, clever. That's good girl. So I'm going to carry this training on for the next few days. Can I do the other side? Yes, clever girl. And what I might do is every meal time is take a little bit of her din dinner or breakfast and do this training to get the harness on. And then I might give her the rest of her breakfast with the harness on. And then we can take it off and that can be training session finished. If you do this every day for a few days, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get see the results. Now this kind of training can be done with anything that they don't like. For example, if they're scared of wheelie bins that they find out in the street, obviously you're not going to ask them to put their head into a wheelie bin, but you can use the same principles. So you can click or use your clicker word and treat for when they're looking at the wheelie bin or taking a step towards the wheelie bin, um, when they go up and sniff it. Um, if they get brave enough to go up and actually nudge it, then that's possibly requires a jackpot uh, and you can do that with every wheelie bin that you find when you're outside. It's a bit more difficult when it comes to them being scared of dogs or people because dogs and people move about and they can do unexpected things but this form of training is absolutely perfect for stationary objects that you have control over and a lot of the principles are the same when you're using it with 
anything else that the dog is scared of. Make sure you go at your dog's pace and make sure you reward them for any good behaviour.